Okay, this is Gene Bosler. I'm in Houston, Texas. We're looking at a mature water oak. This is hypoxylon canker. This is regarded, uh, do you see the brown powder on my finger? Um, that's fairly fresh. On some of this older stuff, the powder doesn't come off. It's not there anymore. On sycamore, it's black. Um, I've seen it on maple where it's black. I've seen it on cedar elm where it's more like this color. Um, this is widely regarded as being a saprophyte or kind of a post-mortem attacker. You can see it all up this crown. That entire portion of that crown is dead. This part is not yet infected with hypoxylon. Uh, I don't want people to believe what they hear when folks say that once a tree has hypoxylon it's gone. This particular tree does indeed need to come down because once this is gone that's all that's left. You have a pretty severe imbalance and it's just a matter of time before the rest of this declines. But I do have customers particularly with live oak where they've had massive hypoxylon inf infection and that part was pruned out and here years later that tree still stands. This is not a case of that. This is, you know, this is the kind of situation that gives rise to that, um, that common belief is that once a tree gets hypoxylon, it's gone. Because, it, well, it's true in this case, for crying out loud. Yeah, we, we, we went into this eyes wide open. We tried our best. Uh, this did not have any hypoxylon. Last time we looked at this tree, it was still green. But let me give it to you from a distance. We did try a couple of things. We, we fertilized. We did not do root invigoration. That's a very big expense, and you don't want to incur that kind of expense until you kind of know whether or not the tree is going to stabilize. Not on one. This, this is a. This would have, from the start, been an an, an ill-suited candidate for a root invigoration procedure. I'll see if I can find some photographs to compare it to. I don't think I have any though. Thanks for tuning in.